Hi, welcome to James Miller Lifeology, where you learn to simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. My name is James Miller. I'm a licensed psychotherapist and a composer. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Let's get started. I wanted to take just a quick moment to thank you all who continually support and listen to James Miller Lifeology. I have been so blessed and honored by your continual support. I wanted to make sure that you don't miss out on anything exciting that's happening over here. So make sure you sign up for my free newsletter at jamesmillerlifeology.com. I have a great show for you today. I'm going to help you be mindfully aware of how you're feeling and thinking so you don't carry it over to the next event. I'll also be interviewing thought leader and transformational coach Liana Shauli, who is going to teach you her AAA program of how to rise above any of your circumstances and fully lead and live your amazing life. For more information about Liana, please visit betheoffer.com. I have some exciting news. Did you know that I'm on the radio three times a week? You may hear me on the same station on Tuesdays at 1.30 p.m., Fridays at 9.30 a.m., and Saturdays at 12.30 p.m. You may also hear me anytime on iHeartRadio as well as on all the other major podcasting platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and many others. Simply search for the show name, James Miller Lifeology. Many of you know me as a psychotherapist, but some of you don't yet know me as a composer. I currently have two albums which have been released. Think of both albums like books. Each composition is written like a chapter in a book. The first album, Consolation, explores the character's grief and loss. And just like a story, the character experiences heartache and eventually he finds healing and hope. The second album, Restoration, follows the same character. He has an internal awakening. And in this awakening, he recognizes all the things in his life which aren't healthy. And it helps him come to a place of restoration, being restored to something greater than before. You may purchase both albums on iTunes or any other digital music store or simply listen to them on iHeartRadio. The names of the albums are Consolation and Restoration and my stage name is James S. Miller. The name of the piece you're currently hearing is from the second album, Restoration, entitled Awakening. Lead Your Life When situations happen in our life, we often like to think that we'll take the high road and respond in a way that's authentic to who we are. And yes, that's true. Most of the time we're able to do that. But what happens when you're blindsided? What happens when someone says something or does something that you're just not expecting and you react in a way that's really not authentic with who you are? Later in the show, you're going to hear Liana's AAA program, which is going to help you go step by step of what to do in the moment. This particular segment is going to give you supplemental information so you can practice this before you get triggered. What I always tell my clients to do is to randomly set an alarm on your phone. When this alarm goes off, you do an internal scan. In this internal scan, you have two scales. One is for how your emotions are, and two is how your body feels. Often we think it's one and the same, but it's not. For example, let's say you wake up and your body isn't feeling very well. You have a cold or something. And then often we think, oh, well, I can't joke with my friends or I can't get some of this work done at home that I need to do. The reality is your body's hurting, but it doesn't affect your mood. Conversely, let's say you wake up on the wrong side of the bed. You are really anxious about something. You're really angry about something. Or you're really depressed about something. All of a sudden you think, well, I can't get out of bed. I have to stay in bed all day. The reality is your body is absolutely fine. Your emotions are telling you that you can't do the responsibilities you have to do that day. So that's why it's important to separate between what your body feels like and what your emotions are. So on these two scales, 10 is the best you feel and one is the worst you feel. When you can differentiate between what your emotions are and what your body feels like, it helps you then take responsibility for what you can change. The more often you're able to do this internal scan, you can then realize, well, why am I upset right now? What happened to me an hour ago? Am I carrying that over to the next hour or to the next event in my life. And if you are, then it's important for you to take responsibility and tell yourself, I don't want to bring this over. I don't want to carry this over to the next thing I'm going to do. There's nothing worse than having a really rough day at work and you come home and you take it out in your family and don't even realize that you've brought in the previous emotional baggage or stress from earlier in the day into this next venture. That's why it's so important to always practice these internal scans because you immediately know what your body feels like when you're triggered. You'll immediately feel and understand the emotions that you're experiencing. So therefore, when you do get triggered by something small or something big, you've already trusted yourself to be able to hold on to that emotion and to decide what you're going to do with it. There's nothing worse than having to practice in the moment when you're fully triggered and fully upset about something. Because more than likely, our default is to be very reactive and not be true to who we really are. So the more often you can practice these little scans, the more quickly you can then decide if you're going to carry over those emotions into the next hour or into the next event that you're going to do. The more introspection you have, the more you're able to lead and live your amazing life. 
Did you know I have a YouTube channel? That's actually how Lifeology started. I have well over 155 episodes that I've created specifically for you. I do know that many people struggle with listening to a full 30-minute show. So these episodes are about three minutes long. Each episode will give you a practical tool or technique that you can practice daily to help you simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. Simply go to my website, jamesmillerlifeology.com, or go to YouTube and search for my name, James Miller Lifeology. Liana Shauli is a president and founder of Image Therapists International, a corporation whose vision is to assist clients in developing and embodying leadership skills, self-empowerment, and an authentic image. A globally recognized thought leader, transformational mentor, inspirational keynote speaker, best-selling author, Liana has spent over three decades consulting CEOs, celebrities, and political figures in the domains of image and leadership. By her corporate clients, she is called upon to provide inspiration as well as transformation, which uplifts the culture of the community she mentors. Her transformative practices, living life in a mindful action, have been the basis for the powerful shifts her clients are living. She is going to inspire us today with her wisdom. Welcome to my show, Liana. Hi, James. I am so excited to be here. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so glad that you're here as well. My listeners may not know this, but Liana was a guest on my show before. We talked about how to be an authentic masterpiece. And so I'm so excited for her to come back today and share her amazing wisdom with us. So the topic today is going to be leadership with style. How committed are you to leading your big life? So Liana, you have so much wisdom that I cannot wait for you once again to share with my listeners. (laughs) Well, I'm so grateful to be here um, on the day where I'm, I'm having the wonderful opportunity and the invitation to go train firemen in leadership, so in Los Angeles. And, and I share this with you because living a big, authentic life has a lot to do with leadership. Mm-hmm, it really does. And, and what's really interesting about all of this is we think of leadership as being out there. You know, how many people are you leading? What's going, how are you being with your team? And what are you doing in your community? And are you showing up as a leader? But we think of that as an outside kind of an action. Yes. Well, the truth is that the most important thing, person, community, mindset that you want to be leading is yourself. There's a huge piece of that that we don't look at. We often don't look at, especially as a CEO or as a, a leader in our community. We, we know that we have to be good out there. Yes. We go, oh, they're going to look at me and then they're not going to like what they see and I have to show up and I'm committed. So we're committed often to something that is kind of like, it's almost like a f- mask. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're able to do that. You know, we have staff and we have people around us. They'll take up the slack. But that's not what I'm talking about. My, my conversation about how are you leading your life is like between you and you and God, mm-hmm. right? Yes. At night, when you go to bed and there's all these open drawers in your mind, where you're going, oh my God, I didn't do that. And oh my God, I should have said that better. And why didn't I apologize to this person? And uh, oh, I could have used a different word when I, or a different intonation Mm -hmm. or a different kind of a mindset, or I could have looked at that from that person's perspective. But the truth is, that's not a big conversation that's out there in the world. Yeah, It's like a conversation that's hidden. We don't really go out into the world and say, listen, you know what I don't want you to know about me is that I had a really difficult conversation with someone yesterday and that conversation got me so triggered that I said something really negative to this person as a reaction to whatever that was. We don't do that because we're so afraid of looking not like a leader. That's right. Removing that mask, you know, when no one else is around. And that's when sometimes we don't even look at that in our own life. Taking that time, like you're saying, at, just before you go to sleep or just even throughout the day to have that internal awareness and scan to say, what is going on with me? Why am I having all these blind spots that I didn't even realize were there? Because we do put those masks on for so long and we wear them really well. But sometimes we even trick ourselves into believing we're something that we're really not. Yes, absolutely. And the mask becomes ossified and it then becomes the face. Mm-hmm. And so one of the pieces that I'm very interested in, or I mean, there's a lot of pieces that I'm interested in, the human behavior and the way we show up as leaders, I want to learn to go inside. I want all of us to have the opportunity as a group to go internally and see what's stopping me from living my wholehearted, big, authentic life Mm -hmm. so that I can show up as a pebble in your lake with congruency with transparency. That's the key word, yes. With vulnerability. Because the truth is, 
we've all got stuff that's bogging us down. We all have beach balls that we're trying to hold underwater. <gasps> oh my God, they can't see this. Oh my God, it's <laughs> about me. Yeah. If they knew that whatever, I can give you five million, you know, fill in the blanks. Would people like hate me? Would they would they not listen to me? Would, you see, we're so afraid of speaking the truth about the stuff that we have considered less than, that we have considered mistakes. And there's a whole construct that we've con- constructed around that. Mm-hmm. The truth is that who we are today, whether we're leaders or politicians or actors or life coaches, transformational leaders, thought leaders, we've all had our share of, I'm not going to say the word that also starts with SH. <laughs> yes. No? Stuff, yeah. <laughs> Double yeah. shift. We've all had our share of shift. Yes. But we didn't listen to the shift. We reacted. We did not take a mindful action to say, with all this poop around me, there's got to be a pony somewhere. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's a great way to look at that. I like that. There's got to be a pony somewhere. There's got to be a lesson. There's got to be a blessing. So if I've just come to this place in my life where, oh my God, things are falling down around me and this person left and that person doesn't talk to me and this person, what do all these situations have in common? Me. Exactly. That common denominator. Right. They don't know each other, but they're giving you the same feedback or similar feedback. My invitation to all of us is become a leader in really recognizing and noticing what's happening in your life. Without the detrimental causes of, oh, I'm not good enough. Oh my God, nobody can hear this. Just sit down and write it. Mm. You know, we're having this conversation right now and we're presencing something that everybody's experiencing, but let's yes. give your listeners a place to start so that they can uncover and discover and recover what's theirs. I love that. I love that recovery component of it. Looking at every single thing we do, there's a lesson. And when we don't realize that there's a lesson, we lose out on a wonderful opportunity to grow and develop. One thing I always like to talk about is when I walk my dog, he loves to smell everything. <laughs> and so sometimes if I'm like, come on, we got to go. And then all of a sudden I find that I'm getting frustrated or annoyed when he's doing what a dog does. Well, then that's a lesson for me to say, clearly I need to learn patience today. Right in this moment, I'm lacking a patience. <laughs> so I need to really practice that. And so I always... I I always try, like to try to do this in my own life. It doesn't mean I'm always perfect at it, but I always like to look for those life lessons as well because there's so much I want to do. There's so many things that I, I want to be that I can't do that if I don't take the moment to look at all the small little facets of my life of where a blind spot is. It's so interesting that you brought this up because this piece that you just talked about, you know, you're walking your dog and then you get frustrated. That is a reaction. So I developed a practice many, many years ago, about 25 years ago, where I would look at people and I would go, or myself, I mean, it started with me, but then me can go to we, you know, how mm. can I, how can I be more of we, because we constantly like in our own lives and it's like me, 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 take that M, turn it upside down and turn it into a we. So how do we do no. that? <laughs> You're so clever. I'm loving this, <laughs> Liana. How do we do that? You know? Yes. What's the practice, Liana? You're giving us all this insight, and yeah, this is really fantastic, and it's inspirational, but give me something to be, something to mm. do, something to look for. Practical tools and strategies, yes. Yeah, a practical tool. So I have something called Liana's Triple A Plan, mm-hmm. three A's. So what do you think... The first A stands for authenticity. That's a very good word, but that's not the word. Oh, okay. <laughs> so let's 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 get the context so everybody who's listening can actually engage in this. So okay. the context is, you know, shift hits the fan. You're sitting somewhere, and somebody comes and drops a, a cup of coffee on you. It was an accident. They got hit by somebody else. They drop a cup of coffee on you. You're wearing a white sweatshirt, and then you're not wearing a white sweatshirt. There's a cup of coffee. <laughs> okay. Suddenly you look like a brown Dalmatian. Yeah. <laughs> and so you, like, what do you think happens to a person when that happens? They become they very have, angry, yes. Yeah, they have a reaction. Mm-hmm. But that is just a placeholder for what happens in life. The shooting that happened in Vegas, the earthquakes, the, the hurricanes, yes. The wife coming home and saying, I'm having an affair, I'm getting a divorce. You walking in on someone as you see they're doing something that they shouldn't be. It could be any situation, Mm -hmm. James. Across the board, yep. Across the board. You can take this blueprint and land it onto any situation in your life. Someone is doing something. 
I react and then I blame that person for my reaction. The truth is when we do that, there is no agency. I have no agency. There's no powerfulness about who I am as a stand. All I'm doing is a reaction to someone else's behavior. Mm -hmm. So in this triple A plan, the first A stands for awareness. Ah. So shift hits the fan. The coffee cup is now on your sweatshirt. And then you can choose to be aware instead of choosing to be in something else. Reactive. A something else, which I can't <laughs> use to say on the air, and become really reactive and start screaming and yelling at yes. the person who dropped the coffee cup yes. on you. A different so you, A. <laughs> yeah, a different A, exactly. So that's exactly why this is so much fun. Because <laughs> you can remember it. Yes. Okay. So instead of being an A something, you become aware. Yes. When you have an awareness, which in my world is you can feel the insides of your eyelids. Mm. Because when you feel the insides of your eyelids, you are in your body. Yes. You can listen to your emotions. You can hear your heart panting. You can hear your breath going, oh my God, I am ready to stick a fork in this guy's mm -hmm. eye. You, know? <laughs> you, can, you can feel that. That's an emotion, energy in motion, emotion. So then you can say, then you can go to the next A. What do you think the next A is? Awareness. Um, awareness. Um, oh Which goodness. is the hardest piece for people to even wrap their mind around. That's why it goes in the middle. It is sandwiched between the first A and the, the third A. It's acceptance. Ah, acceptance. Okay, that makes See, sense. When we are having a reaction, it is a, it is a result of not being able to be with life exactly the way it is and exactly the way it isn't. How do I know this is supposed to happen? Well, it just happened. Ah, oh, I see. Okay, and that makes you sense. you have a choice. You can e either accept what just happened. That doesn't mean that you have to become a doormat, but you can just go, okay, well, you know what? It, this is it. It's here right now. Mm -hmm. Now, I can be different. I can choose. I can choose. That's the key. I can choose through my awareness and my acceptance. I can choose to take the next step which is, what do you think the next A is? For? Oh, clearly I'm not doing very well. So we have awareness, acceptance, um, action. Good. Yes, I got one right. <laughs> you win the prize. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> so, so you have an awareness, then you can, the, the quality and the level of your acceptance is going to influence the mindful action that you're about to mm. take. And mindful is a key word there, mindful, not, not reactive. Yes. Thank you for being so conscious on that. So, but most of us don't do that. You know, shift hits the fan, we react, we slap the guy, we flip the finger, we tell him what a wonderful, whatever, A, something he is <laughs> or she is. And we have just burnt the bridge to world peace. Yes. And then it ruins our day for many people, it ruins the day for forever or it ruins the week or whatever it may be. But then oh, we've lost out on those other wonderful opportunities. The guy, yeah. The guy that you just flipped the finger at in traffic or the wife that you just yelled at or your husband that you just did whatever. Those three seconds of your reactivity leave horrible scars. Yes. Your reaction, your reactivity goes from the reptilian brain and it is wired to live in the body. It doesn't go through the neocortex. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go through the frontal lobe. There is no thinking. You know when people say in English, what the hell were you thinking? Mm -hmm. you, you weren't thinking. Exactly, you weren't. Yeah. It is an embodied reaction. And I always say to my clients and my students, I say, if, if it's familiar, it's from the past, James. That's a very good point. So in order for us to rewire our brain, in order for us to be more up level, this, this triple A plan, that's why I want, I'm so excited to share this with you. It gives you an opportunity to really, I don't care where you stick it in your car, on your phone, have signs up, awareness, acceptance, and action, awareness, acceptance, and action. And then when you feel this, this feeling coming on, it could be frustration, it could be detriment, it could be anger, it could be hatred, it could be disappointment, it could be any of the feelings that are on the lower scale of the spectrum. Shame. Yes. Shame is a huge one. That's like the, that's like the bottom of the pit. 
take this moment and just go, so what's happening right now? Like, why am I ashamed? Is there really truth to what it is that I'm experiencing? Or is this just my interpretation? Like that person didn't call me back or uh, my husband just flew off the handle. Why am I taking that in? Mm -hmm. I can be God's messenger right here in this moment and just stay grounded and stay inside my heart and I can choose a different outcome. But when you're in conjunction with someone else, like if somebody says something and you react and they react and they react, it's like this ball game that's never going to end. Mm -hmm, exactly. And we lose focus. We lose our ability to be proactive because we live in a world of reactivity. Right. And then even if you say, even if it's like a, a superior of yours or a client, you know, where you say, okay, I can't say this. I have to just shut up and I have to put it all inside my system and shove that beach ball down. Mm -hmm. The truth is that it is still reacting and mm. it is going as a toxic decay into your body. Yes. And so my invitation to everyone is when we become a little bit more aware and we notice things and we notice our language and then we accept the fact that, you know what? Yeah, I just made a mistake. But immediately you can take a mindful action towards that other person. You can say, you know what? I am so sorry. I have no idea where those words just came from. I really want to just apologize and acknowledge you. My God, you could turn the world around. Oh my gosh, amazing, yes. You really could in such a powerful, powerful way. And that in itself, I think, is so inspiring because we have the power of life and death in our tongue, power of life and death in our thoughts. Literally, we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so in that, that's, you're, you're creating such a wonderful internal awareness for yourself, the, the power of death in your, in your own mind and your thinking to destroy that situation or to make it even worse or to have that opportunity to be proactive externally by creating a wonderful opportunity for growth and healing and personal development. Right. I, I want to share one more piece of this because I believe that people show up at the level we hold them at. Mm. Okay. So this is a piece that goes into this triple A plan because so many people are going to listen to this and they're going to go, well, but Liana, you have no idea, but he did this and she <laughs> did that. And you know, uh, I, I say to my clients, I say, you think that ha you have the right because you were wronged. You think you mm. have the right and then you can put in whatever you want to do to X, Y, and Z because you were wronged. But the truth is that that is only a cycle downward. That's yes. a spiral that can only take you down. So if you have the opportunity and the grace, if you can get to a place where you can access your grace in Kabbalah that we call it Rahmunas, if you can access your grace and your kindness and your love and that's where your agency is mm, that's, that's where you cut through all the garbage i don't care how angry the other person is and i know this is hard for a lot of people to listen to but it puts you love will always put you in a place of being above the mediocrity yes it's funny you say that because i, I had someone who reached out to me about something and, and i told this person that the best response you can give well sometimes the best response is no response because we don't want if we're not in a place where we can practice to be able to be as aware and accept and go into the action phase but love will always cast down a wrathful answer or wrathful response in other words love or compassion or that type of response or conciliatory response is going to turn away anything that's negative or anyone that has rage or anger love and i hate to sound cheesy like this but love will always overcome any of that you know the opposite of love is is hate and so with that you remove that and of course you're automatically going to ascend or transcend that actually i love what you just said you said the opposite of love is hate in my world james i'll take it to a next level the opposite of love is indifference mm, i like that when we come to the table when someone is angry at us they're still engaged yes james. that's a good point and so you can choose to be engaged with that person and you can choose to do it at a really high conscious level in order to do that you really want to understand what your own triggers are like i want to understand what my triggers are I want to understand when I'm standing in front of someone and they tell me I am X, Y, and Z, or I look like this, or I do this, or I look, I grew up in Germany as a Persian Jewish girl in Germany. And I used to wear a Star of David around my neck. 
I was constantly called an Ausländer. I was constantly called a dirty Jew. Mm. It was kind of like normal place. Mm. And every once in a while, I mean, I was a child, I would react. But I noticed even as a child that if I could just hold my center, even as a kid, I remember doing this mm. and just be and look at them, look them in the eye and not have a reaction. Every once in a while, I did have a reaction. Like, <laughs> of course. <laughs> like like beating, beating people up and getting them to the hospital and, you know, something oh like that. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so that's a little much. Are you calling anybody a dirty Jew again? <laughs> onto the floor and then cracking their collarbones by jumping in the chest. Oh, my gosh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, we, we, this is another thing I don't want you to know about me. See, because <laughs> there's so much here. I love it. <laughs> I was 10 and this German kid was 18. Oh my gosh. Like, Liana, what are you thinking? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit reactive. <laughs> <laughs> Liana, it has been such an amazing time talking to you. There's so many powerful lessons you've given us. And I know I'm going to have to listen to this interview quite a few times so I can really extrapolate and really assimilate all the amazing things that you've taught us. So to recap, we have the, the AAA program, which is the awareness, acceptance, action. Yes. And that is what I think is what a powerful tool that people can really start to practice. Because once again, once they do that, the more they can transcend their circumstances and live a life that's much more proactive, developed, and holistic. Yes, they can. Now, if my listeners would like to find out more information about you and about all the amazing things that you do, I mean, you were telling me in the pre-call how all these phenomenal things you're doing. I'm so excited for you. <laughs> Where would they find this information online? Please go to bettheoffer.com. So B-E-T-H-E-O-F-F-E-R.com. Be the offer, because I believe that you are always an offer onto the world. Yes. It's a beautiful masterpiece. And send me an email, you know, send us an email, liana at imagetherapists.com if you have questions. Uh, when you go to be theoffer.com and you put in your name and your email address, you'll be part of our tribe and you'll get to hear every single thing that's out there. And I want you to ask questions. There's Wonderful. never a stupid question. So please get in touch, ask questions. I'm here for you. I'm excited to hear how this is working in your life. And I'd love for you to go on our Facebook page, Liana Shauli Image Therapists International. And then we can put the links down, right, James? Yes, excellent. So what I'm going to do is in the show notes as well. So if people um, are hearing this on the radio or on the podcast, just simply go to my website, jamesmillerlifeology.com, and you can find all the information that Liana has said. It'll be in the show notes as well as all the links, her email, everything you want. And in fact, the book that she had written before, Being an Authentic Masterpiece, is also on my storefront of jamesmillerlifeology.com, where you can also purchase that. So Liana, I will, like I said, I'll have everything on there for my listeners to be able to connect with you. Thank you so much for being a guest on my show today. It's always a pleasure to have you join with us. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> you do. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. I also want to thank you, the listener, for tuning in today. Please subscribe to this radio show through whichever port you joined with us today, or please go to my website where you may sign up for my free newsletter, watch my YouTube episodes, read the articles I've written specifically for you, or you may enroll in the Lifeology Academy where you can take self-directed courses which will help you simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. If you'd like to personally work with me, be a guest on or advertise on this show, simply visit jamesmillerlifeology.com. Be sure to follow me on all social media platforms under the name James Miller Lifeology, except for Twitter, which is James M. Lifeology. Once again, thank you so much for your support and I'll talk to you soon.